Carl McKeever is a retail consultant for big brands like IKEA, John Lewis and Sainsbury's. Leicester has ploughed over £400,000 into this place, so it's unrealistic to expect a complete overhaul. But I do want to see if Carl can enhance the customer experience and commercial performance with a more space-focused theme. What the customer really wants here is, is to understand what's to come. So you need to have good navigational signage, you need to have a real strong call out around each of the different areas. Yeah. And as I scan around here, I see this kind of random mishmash of miscellaneous information, different styles, yes. different t tone of voice. It really reads as nothing. It's not an appealing entry. What the children want is just these great big call outs to say, I want to go here, I yeah. want to go here. Actually, all I see is really empty chairs and a very big open space. OK. Shall we go through? Great. I really like all this. It's fun. So, look, as, as an idea, it's great. But I think then beyond that, I think this has got more of a female feeling. So I think, you know, almost for boys to come into this kind of big pink and orange palace is not quite so inviting. It's not entirely clear who this is targeted at. No. It's a little bit scary. I think it's got a very poor adjacency, but also this blocks the view through to the parents as well. Lastly, I'm keen to hear Carl's opinion on Leicester's beloved coffee shop. Whilst it's really important to have an area which you know, speaks and is more comfortable for the adults, it shouldn't feel like an entirely separate place. So I think there needs to be a bit more cohesion with the, the overall space theme. All businesses need to ensure that the product they offer is for the right people in the right market, otherwise they will fail. Because of its split customer base, Big Space faces a tougher challenge than most. Using the space theme, I want Carl to come up with some new, innovative designs. Overall, I want to give this place a complete facelift, but I think, you know, we need to get the basics right yeah, first. Absolutely. The main thing for me, for my personal happiness, is yes. the cleaning of the equipment. That's not a problem. You know what needs doing. So, you know, the cleaning of the equipment, it's, it's on a daily sheet to be yeah. done. Yeah. What I have to do is to make sure the staff are doing it. They're I know, not, darling, but it. you're the boss. Exactly. No, I know. You're you know, right. But it's, it's your it's, job it's to do this. this. OK. Finally, yes. I challenge you to go to some very good competitors. I want you to go and see <laughs> at least exist. three, darling. Go and get some ideas. Go and compare prices. You don't have to undercut people. You just have to make sure you match your competitors. Yep. I'm not back for a couple of weeks. OK. So you've got a couple of weeks oh, to I'll do it. I'll get 14 this. days to do this, do I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, think, I think you should be grateful. If a business doesn't understand what product the customer wants, the majority of them will simply seek an alternative to have their needs met. It's imperative that Leicester and Sue know what their closest rivals are offering, so I've arranged for them to meet the owners. This is not good. We're not happy. Well, you decide, darling. If you don't want to go in, I don't want to go in. It feels wrong to go into a competitor that was established after us. No, I'm not going in. No. You can go in if you want. It's too humiliating. It's, it's too embarrassing. I've, I've clearly got pride and I'm prepared to work hard and I'm prepared to take guidance, but I don't want to have my nose rubbed in a peer's um, version of what I do. There's nothing I can be shown that I can't be told. No, we're not going to turn big space into this. I'm not going to change any colours, I'm not going to change any food. So to, to come here as Mr and Mrs Big Space and say, oh, we're having trouble, tell us what you're doing, is making me unbelievably uncomfortable. Well, you're going to be in such trouble with Alex. <laughs> Well, I hope I can find the words to explain it yeah. to her. And she's in business. She's a businesswoman herself. So maybe she'll understand it. Maybe she'll, she'll certainly get an idea of where I'm coming from. This makes us sound so bad, though. It makes us sound like we're not prepared to, to accept that anybody might have a better way of doing things no. than us. That's right. No, we'll, we accept change, but there's a, there's a fine line between arrogance and pride. And, and we're pr proud of what we've done. Our staff are proud of what we've done and what they're doing. They'd be mortified oh, for when Oh, God, if they yeah, found out we'd gone into that one. Mm. No, no. 
Two out of three company execs won't change their mind once they've made a decision. Why? Because they think they know best. According to an American survey, this is known as the cost of ego and is the major reason behind bad decision-making, costing a company up to 20% of annual revenue. The more we thought about it, the more we realised, do you know what, this, this is just wrong. Sometimes, though, you have to just go in and have a little look, because obviously they're doing something right, because they've got all our customers, what makes people go to them rather than well, us. We don't know if they are or they aren't. It's, it's strange, isn't it? Because a few years ago, when you had, you know, Ross and Maddie with kids, you would have probably gone in there to play. Yep. Now we don't even... No, I have a clue really, apart from when we look online. What's that, that one? Why was that on a two minute timer? Right, I'm going to get a plate. I, I can kind of see where he's coming from because I know how stubborn he is. I think sometimes it can kind of affect his judgment. I think he should kind of go through the doors, maybe talk to some of the people in there, see what their, you know, what their views are on our place and why they're here, not there. Nearly five weeks in, and I feel I'm no further along than when I first arrived. So, last time I was here, I yes. asked you to go and check out some competitors, mm -hmm. and you struggled with that challenge, didn't you? Yes. Tell yes. me why. Well, to go and see an equivalent seemed n not a very practical way of doing things. I'd like to go and see somebody I aspire to be like, somebody that I probably am not in the same league as, and something that I would like to kind of really fight to be like. Um, and, and to just go to a nearby rival just didn't seem right. Was it a Tell bit embarrassing? Yeah, a little bit of ego came in, probably. Listen, darling, I don't blame you. This is a very yeah. painful thing to do. Yes. This is not an easy process. Yeah. I'm not minimising it in the least. No, no. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm not sure you've ever been to a business that's as personal as this one. Every, everywhere you look in here is a decision I've made. It's something I've built. It's something I've sourced. It's something I've painted or constructed or repaired or I'm maintaining. There's nothing in here that doesn't come directly from me. I get that. However, okay. we don't have that long together, and so I kind of want to c cut to the crux of the matter. Yes. Um, as quickly as possible and start finding solutions for things. Yeah. 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 I do feel sympathetic towards Lester and his predicament, but there is no point asking for my help and then refusing to consider any of my suggestions. I'm bringing back Carl McKeever with the new space-themed designs. I just hope Lester is ready to embrace this change. So, we worked from the basis that themes really work with children of the age group that you're attracting. It um, really sparks their imagination. Hope you like it. Do comment. I know you will. I have no doubt. <laughs> OK. Uh, over to you. So, first of all, we want to create you with a really strong presence as you arrive in the car park. OK. When we've done that and we bring them into the environment, what we propose to do is a floating ceiling raft which will hang pretty much above the whole reception area. Okay. And so actually when you stand at the reception area, you get the, the sense of looking up into the universe. Do you like all the planets? No, There's right? an awful lot of dusting, was my very first thought. <laughs> we have a lot of problems here with dust. Yes, we know. Um, and I, I, yeah, we need to know how that works and how we can easily get them dusted. Next. So with the climbing wall, we propose to leave it in its current position, yeah. but actually to redecorate it in the same design style what we then have is the existing rocks that are on here, which become our meteorite shower. Yeah, yeah. And with a site across the top, which is our moonwalk or spacewalk, then we really start to give that area a presence in its own right. We're firmly in that kind of place now where I'm not sure that that would make children play on it any more than what we've already got. But I've got nothing to lose. It's just reinforcing, reinforcing, reinforcing. I mean, whether you're climbing in it or not, it's going to be a wall of big planets. Yeah. So I love that. The space theme has also been incorporated into the cafe. Around the place, you can see here a lot more use of your characters and all of the sort of space aliens, etc. The only thing at the moment, do you want to be sitting in a playground with your coffee? Well, what I think is ultimately, you know, it's like we're parents. As long as your kids are happy, yeah. you tend to be happy. Yeah. We don't want it to feel like a different entity. We want it to feel like it's one unified theme so that people are very clear that they're getting that whole big space experience right. throughout it. Finally, we have devised a fun way to market big space. We put together this photo opportunity board for you 
before perhaps when people are leaving and they've had a great time here and it's just something to finally do on the way out. You could then offer to email it to them, free, gratis and for nothing, and that means you then capture their email address for further marketing. We've tried taking emails before and people don't like it. But I don't like it, darling, but I still do it. I think we do need a database because it gives you people to approach. You know, this is just the foundation. If it's helpful to leave you with the hard copies, then you can scribble on them, make any additional comments or whatever. That's, That's great, because then I can take those away. That's brilliant. Can I get my shredder? Oh, gosh, I'm leaving here so frustrated again. Everything I suggest um, has always been tried, or Lester doesn't want to try, and uh, it feels like uh, it's one step forwards and then two steps sideways and probably a step back again. Uh. Every business, big or small, has to adapt to a changing market. Otherwise, their product can become dated and shunned. This can mean reinventing a tried and tested product. This year, a record number of independent bookshops closed, largely due to the cutthroat competition of Amazon and eBooks. Even high street chain Waterstones nearly went into liquidation in 2011. To survive, they needed to drastically change their business model. Their new strategy? To give customers a broader, more immersive shopping experience. They upgraded their 300 stores and dropped the apostrophe started stocking stationery and games, introduced coffee shops, and even teamed up with their arch-rival Amazon to sell Kindles. Who's next, please? Having lost over £37 million, they are now generating cash once again. Waterstones are still here because they adapted for their customer. Something other high street chains weren't quick enough to do. I'm really worried about how Lester and Sue will react when I bring him in here. But ultimately, I've got to confront them with the reality of what they're risking. There's no point taking an aspirin for a raging temperature. You need more than that. And I just think that he's got to stop making excuses for the place failing and accept that change is what's needed. So, I have brought you to these less than salubrious surroundings to present you with what happens when you lose relevance to your customer base. Blockbuster was, you know, the, the big thing. Mm. Everyone rented a video from here, I did it myself. Mm. Then, you know, they were slightly slow about adopting DVDs. And then by the time they'd taken on DVDs, they'd already gone bust once. And someone bought them again, thinking they could turn it around. They started renting out games. What they hadn't understood was that the whole way that everyone was watching television, watching movies, playing games, was completely different. They were downloading from the net um, and they were sharing. They thought that they could just keep on doing what they were doing and sooner or later it would come right. They had this immense belief in their product. Despite declining sales, they always thought that somehow or other they could just about turn it round. I don't want this to be you. You've got to stay relevant. You've got to stay somehow... Um, sorry, Sue. Sure. I, I hope I haven't upset you. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's the reality of the situation. That I think we started it how many years ago, understanding the market, understanding what parents wanted because we had children that age. And I just think things have moved on and I don't have the ideas anymore. I think that's what frightens me is that I don't have any answers or any suggestions so I end up I'm listening to you but I, I don't feel I can contribute I think you know we all feel that that it's just like the world is moving on so quickly I just think we've got to somehow make a real effort to kind of freshen up change the offering again you've got to be brave and I know you keep saying to me I've tried this and I don't believe in that and I don't want to do you know and I just think that somehow there's there's not enough momentum and I feel that I have got to say this to you because I'm going to feel very guilty when I go and I will feel like I haven't done my best for you so I just feel like no more excuses it's just whatever has got to be done has got to be done and it's got to be done very quickly now yeah. Because this is the alternative, and I don't think it's a pretty one. <sighs> oh.
Well, I found that really hard. I didn't enjoy it at all. But I hope I've finally got through to them properly. We'll see tomorrow. She's obviously thought, if we change something radical, then we can turn it around. Yeah, but we can't bigger. do the little things. Can't do the little things, because it's felt like we're just going to do little things. Yeah, very much so. Well, it's because you would only agree to the little things. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know what won't work, you know, I know what we've tried. Well, you think you know, but it's true, isn't it? There are things that we've tried that we would rule out now because we'd already tried them. Yeah. But maybe they would work now if we're coming at it from a different place, I don't know. But then what are you going to destroy while you try to change something? Are you going to foul up something that's working OK now? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> No change is completely without risk. But inaction is a far more dangerous game. I think that it would be good for you to have a different perspective on things. Because I, I, I live and breathe this place, don't I? This is, this is designed from ground up by me. I don't think it's always just that, that um, because you've chosen it, you don't want it to change. It's, it's that you don't want it to change. Mm, yeah. So to have somebody else's ideas actually implanted might be a bit of a turning point for you. I don't know if you'd find it quite freeing for somebody else to take that reign just for a little bit. Yeah I, I, yeah, I think I probably would, be, just because of the trust. Three weeks later, and my pep talk seems to have made an impression. So tonight's the first evening of the um, refurb. Cut it. I must have spare ones of those. After some compromise, Lester approves Carl's designs. It shows it's been long overdue for a bit of a... Bruce up. Unfortunately, the hanging planets and aliens in the cafe didn't make the cut. But at least we're making some progress. Wow. It's blue. And Lester seems happy. Wow. I'm confident the refit will be more in keeping with what its customers want, but only if it is kept clean by the staff. One of the things that I really have noticed about here and that I'm not very comfortable about is that the cleanliness in general yeah. isn't good enough. What has to happen is that Lester and you have got to walk the space properly every single day, noting down what has been done, what needs to be done, what is not satisfactory. I know that everyone's given jobs to do, and yeah. it's a tick box thing, but unfortunately, darling, you have to it's check. It's not working out, no. Now, I've never had any kind of formal training, any help or any guidance for this job. I've yeah. literally come straight from uni, thrown yeah. straight into it, yeah. and I'm kind of going from what I've seen before. Yeah. And there's some aspects of business that I'm not too sure on, I think the thing is, it's quite hard to be a manager because you have to be quite confident about telling people where they're going wrong. You need to keep everyone's spirits up, but you also need to crack the whip a bit. And I'm going to be encouraging you to do that, and I'm going to be encouraging Lester to do that. Otherwise, there's just no way to make this place work properly. During the day, Monday to Friday, we are bored and we are just working through our list of jobs towards the end of the day, that is it. No drive, no motivation, no kind of ethic to kind of work together. To equip Lester and Jack with the necessary management skills, I'm taking them to a company that is world renowned for its staff training. pret a first appeared on the London High Street in the mid 80s. Today, its 350 outlets turn over £500 million a year. Six years ago, they achieved their goal of raising the quality of customer service with a groundbreaking training academy. Good to How see you. Ian. Very good, thank you. Ian, head of the Pret Academy. Small firms can learn a lot from larger ones, and I want to tap into Pret's strategy at their brand new academy in South London. So first of all, how do you instill the Pret way into all these staff? So what we do is bring people to this academy. 
and on average people come through the academy at least two days of their prep career every year. What's the kernel of the prep philosophy with your customers? Well, it's all about fantastic customer service and um, the way we do that is actually having a mystery shopper programme. Mm. So all of our shops, every single week, receive a mystery shopper guest. Gosh, every, every week. Every single week, which is... Every <laughs> shop, every week. It's a huge investment, as you wow. can imagine. Every single team member has the opportunity to earn a pound an hour extra for every hour that they work if their mystery shopper visit is successful. Gosh. And 88% wow. of our shops achieve that every week on average. Managers are also bonused on the mystery shopper as well, well so it's not well. just the team okay. members. Pret believes it was the good training of their staff and managers that helped the chain increase profits throughout the recession. What do you think is a manager's role in particular? Well, the managers are completely accountable for signing off their team members' training. It doesn't mean that they're physically holding the hands of the team member while they're doing things like coffee training, but they are accountable to put their signature at the end of everybody's training. So ultimately, if somebody does mess up in the future, then the, the general manager of that shop is wholly accountable for their people. Ian wants to observe how Lester and Jack operate as managers while teaching a group of Pret students how to make the perfect coffee. I don't train. You know, I, I expect Jack to train the guys. Um, I tell him when something's new, if you get a new piece of equipment, I show them how to use it. But I, I'm not good with training. Just keep in mind that this is not about you training people how to make a coffee. It's about you and how you approach a training exercise. And it's about hopefully concentrating your mind about the level of enthusiasm and energy you need to bring to the task. Over to you guys. Good luck. Pretty sure on these machines and stuff, yeah? Never seen one in my life, mate. Okay. <laughs> uh, watches, uh, uh, rings, you're all okay. Uh, you're perfectly okay. Spot on. The aim of the task is to assess the type of manager they are. A little bit of theatre, a little bit of drama. How was your holiday? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Only then can we learn where they might be going wrong. So I really like what Lester's doing over there with these guys because he's doing a bit of one-to-one -one coaching. You can notice when he's steaming the milk, he's holding their hands almost there. That's it. And push it out of the way. We're going to crank it up. Yeah. Jack, sort the noise out, mate. Yeah, so we're going to need a little bit more milk in there. With Jack, it's a bit hit and miss. You know, there's two trainees that are a bit in chaos, so they're not working together. And he should be doing that one-to-one, -one, really. And then we're going to lean it back. Perfect. Uh, there you go. Beautiful. Now, if you crank it up now, it's awesome. really good. Mm. He's got enthusiasm. Definitely. Which I love. Cup going on. 3.34. Spot on. Oh, oh, we have it. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so Team Lester, the one to one element was perfect, so well done. Did you think he gave them enough independence? I think actually it was a little bit smothering at times, just mm. occasionally. So actually, really a bit too hands on. You know, maybe letting them turn the steam off on their own rather than you jumping right. in to do yes. it, which is a natural thing to do. Yeah, it was hot enough. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, you know, Are you saying I'm good? controlling? Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> that doesn't come up very well. <laughs> and, and he's only just met you. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Team Jack, you've got a very nurturing personality, and I think that shone through. You've very got their attention. And if you had that one to one element with each trainee, I think it would have been bang on the money. Okay. I know you have a process of rewards and that you have your mystery shoppers, but you know, integrally, how do you think your managers keep teams enthusiastic? Simple things like playing great music in the kitchen. That's a really simple motivator in the kitchen. A band in our kitchen. Yeah, well, there you go. I know what it's like to own a business, especially a small business where you're multitasking, yeah. you're doing everything. You know, what you need is a system for yourself to make sure that nothing gets missed off. And I feel like that's something that you could easily improve on. I mean, you've definitely both got the skills necessary to do it. It's just kind of, there's always something more important to do, but really nothing's more important than making sure that your staff espouse your philosophy for your customers. Definitely. Okay. Okay, and in true prep training fashion, there's a little reward for everyone for doing such a great job. So well done, guys. Got yourself some prep goodies. There's a love bar for the lovely team Lester. Thank you. Thank you. Right, guys, quick meeting. Inspired by their coaching, back at Big Space, Jack and Lester are quick to act. So, Jack and I picked up some tips on training. We're really going to kind of drive that home now and, and, and start afresh. And for everybody to understand that there are, there are things that we are expecting and there are things that we're going to be checking. It's going to make working here better. It's going to be uh, more enjoyable, more productive. So um, we've got a lot of work to do. 
but it's going to be fun and yeah, crack on. Smashing. Thanks, guys. Grab mops, buckets, scrubbies, sprays. Just, yeah, just go nuts. We'll get it done. Make sure you brush the net as well. Yeah, see. A re energised workforce is now behind Big Space. Time to hit the streets and start promoting. They can come in free of charge, they can sample our new menu, they can see what's going on. Cool. Over the years, it's been the clients on the Harpenden doorstep that have given up on Big Space. Big Space, we're relaunching tomorrow. So, to lure them back, Lester and Sue are throwing open the doors for a free relaunch party. Free entry, so if you wanted to come along, you're more than welcome. Look forward to seeing it. Come and see, and yeah, the new menu's do. inside. It's a good idea if they get the day right. As many as 96% of unhappy customers don't complain, and 91% of those will simply leave and never come back. It could cause more harm than good, especially if they haven't taken on board a new children's menu and other add-ons. I think the overwhelming feeling I have with Lester is that we could have got a lot further, a lot faster if he'd got stuck in sooner. I feel like most of the time it's like trying to push water uphill. And then, you know, we finally achieve something, but it's about a quarter of what I wanted to achieve in double the time. Today is relaunch day and my final visit to Big Space. It'll be my first glimpse of the revamped interior. The first thing customers used to encounter at Big Space was a wall of corrugated iron and billboards. The new reception now entices children's eyelines to the space-themed interior beyond. I love the fact that you have really clear sight lines. I definitely like that. So you're kind of enveloped in the world from the moment you walk in. The space theme creates a more fun, immersive environment that children will love and remember. Although I think Lester was wrong not to allow the theme to continue into the cafe's interior. The climbing wall does reaffirm the intergalactic look. It does really work. Yeah. It's a lot clearer than it used to be, yes. I think, the yeah. climbing wall aspect of it. The entire toddler area has been restyled in a vibrant, optimistic blue. And to improve sight lines, the toddler house has been opened up with new windows. I like the fact that it's kind of lightened up the whole area. Yeah. Oh my gosh, look at the difference! <gasps> And at the 11th hour, Lester's added new family-friendly hot food options to his transformed space menus. I wasn't going to fight you on that one. God, you're being kind of very generous-spirited today. Have you taken some new medication? <laughs> <laughs> We're at the end of the road. That's what... He's also introduced child-friendly bento boxes. Those look great too, darling. This could be the key to customers staying longer and spending more money. I'm kind of <laughs> amazed. I really didn't expect quite such a change. In any business, customer satisfaction rests firmly with the boss. I'm glad to see Lester has finally taken this on board. But is it enough? There's been a lot of discussion between us about who the customer is. Yeah. You know, is it the parent? with the coffee shop idea? Is it the children with the theme idea? Yeah. Ultimately, we have to please both, don't we? Yeah. Because, um, you know, they come as a package. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm hoping that we will have proof positive that we've done a good enough job. To gauge the success of our efforts, I've devised a test. So what could be easier than green is good, red is bad? Hopefully it will be an immediate signpost as to whether we're doing what we should here. But half an hour after the party begins, things are looking decidedly quiet. I don't know whether we've done enough, I don't know whether they've done enough. I'm worried that the Harpenden mothers and fathers aren't prepared to change their opinion of big space. But 30 minutes later, there is a late surge. We make all these ourselves. 
they're available to buy at the servery. And it's nearly full to capacity. Lester and Sue's promotional push in Harpenden has clearly convinced the locals to give Big Space a second chance. There we go, we make this all ourselves. Oh, did you? Yes, we do. This is now their chance to shine. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you so much for coming to the Big Space relaunch. Hubble is there for photograph opportunities and hugs. Three, two, one. And to prove the profitability of Pester Power, I'm trialling some fun add-ons. There's face painting down there if Florence wants some, and there's someone doing balloon stuff. Oh, oh there we go. So, ladies, do we have our vouchers? Lester has also devised some clever offers to entice people back in. Okay. So these are for use in the May half-term holiday. Two for one entry. Two pounds off entry fee, free slice of homemade cake or cookie. It's a great idea. I hope there's lots of take up. I just hope we've done enough today to make Big Space the customer's place of choice. Fabulous venue, really clean, it's really well thought out. When we'd come here before, the choice of food was a little bit limited, whereas now there's um, sort of hot food, which my daughter loves. I think you'll agree it is overwhelmingly positive. Are you quite happy with this result? I'm happy yeah. with the result. It's, it's always going to be unsettling that somebody has taken the time to pick up a red ball <laughs> and put it in, because it, it just seems a little petty. What we've got to remember, though, is, is all the people that picked up the, the green balls, the positive balls. Today, let's just celebrate the fact that we made over 100 people happy. <laughs> I have been repeatedly frustrated by Lester's resistance, but if he continues to challenge his own constrained points of view and understand the benefits of customer satisfaction, then he's on the right track. So, my dear, you first. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Stay involved. Yes. Keep an eye on him. Yes. Don't, you know, keep on pushing him. You, you can't be trusted on your own. <laughs> you. <laughs> You've driven me mad at times. Good. Very frustrating, Good. but I hope we're parting friends. I think we are. And honestly, I didn't expect half of what I found today. I'm really pleased and grateful that there are as many changes as there are, and I hope they work for us. Thank you. Now as ever, it's down to Lester and Sue, and Lester needs to stay out of the kitchen long enough to force through the changes. If he can do that, I do think that Big Space has a bright future. I've always considered myself a builder and not a maintainer. I, I construct things. I constructed big space and I had that, I tried to have that feeling of, there, it's done. I think I've learned in this process, do you know what, whether you like it or not, you are a maintainer. This is not something you can complete and, and, and leave. It's a nice idea, but it's not gonna work. You have to maintain it, you have to adapt it, you have to change it, and, and that's, that's my wake up call. Lester had already invested heavily in the infrastructure here, so we were only ever going to be able to improve the edges of this business. But ten weeks on... Lester has seen the benefit of add-ons and hired a children's hairdresser. The promotional vouchers are proving a hit... We gave out about a hundred or so. On the day of the free cake, we had about 40 come back. So that definitely tapped into something that people are, oh, I'll have that. And Jack stepped up as manager. I wasn't checking up enough. I wasn't doing enough to make sure the guys were doing what they were meant to. Whereas now the whole place is getting done over every single day. Big Space's success was always going to be down to increasing numbers and customers spending more money once they were in. In the two and a half months since Alex has left, our visitor numbers have increased by nearly 3,000, but the spend per head has gone up by 5%. That's, that's fact, it's there. If this is maintained, then the future looks promising for big space. Oh, oh my God, my hopes are high. <laughs>